This video is sponsored by Audible. Click the link in the description to start your free trial and get your free book. All Might vs. One for All It was a monumental fight, one of my favorite anime fight scenes that I have witnessed in a very long time. But it wasn't the animation or the crazy powers that got me so hyped and enthralled for this final battle between the two super heavyweights of the show. No, what really invested me in the conflict was all the narrative build-up behind it. And I'm not just talking about how All for One was built up to be the villain to end all villains, or the uncertainty of how All Might's waning powers would come to play in effect. The build-up that kept my eyes glued to the screen was all based in All Might's character, and how this battle was the culmination of his character journey, where all the skills he possessed, all the lessons he had learned, and all the perseverance that he contained would be put to the test. And thinking about it, being invested in the fight because of All Might's narrative journey is a bit of a weird thing to say, seeing as how we as the audience haven't seen 95% of it. From the very first moment we are introduced to All Might, he is a well-established pro-hero on the top of the world who, when he has his legs under him, is essentially invincible. He is a master of his own abilities and has reached the pinnacle of who his character is meant to be. All Might at the beginning of My Hero Academia is what Ichigo was at the end of Bleach, or what Simone was at the end of Gurren Lagann. But even starting off this way, and with so little change or development to his character, All Might vs All for One felt like the finale of a series. Everything from the music to the dialogue to the physical toll of the fight created a tone that carried the weight of the end of a show. Except it wasn't the end of a show. Not even close. The fight occurred in season 3 of a show that will have at least 4 seasons, and on episode 50 of a show that will at least have 88 episodes. So with all that being said, why did this fight between All Might and All For One feel so definitive? Well, as far as I could tell, it's because that one way or the other, we as the audience knew that this was the end of All Might's journey. Either he would defeat All For One, his main villain and the cause of so much of his struggles, or he would die trying. In whichever scenario, speaking in a narrative manner, we knew that this was as far as All Might's story went. And naturally, as an audience, we have been conditioned to assume that a story will finish when the main character comes to the end of their narrative journey. And yes, you heard that right. All Might is the main character of My Hero Academia. Or at least he was until episode 50 and his fight with All For One. And if you think I'm completely wrong because Izuku Midoriya is obviously the main character, you know, like it says on the wiki, just stick around for about 10 minutes and hopefully I can convince you otherwise. Now, I know this might ruffle some feathers, but Izuku Midoriya, who I will bounce back and forth calling Deku throughout this video, is nothing more than a side character. Granted, he is a very important side character, but still a side character nonetheless. What the show does expertly though, is put Deku in close proximity to other characters' conflict to disguise that conflict as his own. By Deku being involved in so many different struggles across the show, it creates the illusion that all of the show's struggles center around him, which is the calling card of a main character. So what evidence do I have to support this? Well, let's go back through the show. The first villain that Deku ever encounters is fleeing All Might, and Deku just happens to be around. Later, that same villain just happens to attack Bakugo, someone that Deku knows, and again, Deku just happens to be around to confront him. Skipping forward, when the villains attack the USJ, they did it in an attempt to take down All Might. Deku just happened to be there, along with the rest of the students. The 10 episode sports festival arc in season 2 is way more about Todoroki's character development than anyone else, and Deku is simply close enough to become involved in Todoroki's conflict. The storyline around the hero killer Stain centered on Ida confronting the villain that attacked his brother. Deku, along with a host of other heroes, become involved after the fact. Season 3 opened with the villains attacking the students in the forest training camp with the express purpose of kidnapping Bakugo. You got Bakugo? Of course! And of course, All Might vs All for One has nothing to do with Deku. Now, I already can hear people saying that Deku very much deals with struggles and conflicts of his own and those people would be correct. However, those struggles and conflicts that Deku does experience are not unique to him at all. The biggest conflict, of course, is Deku learning to control and effectively use his quirk. And while it is inarguable that he struggles with it more than others, every single student at UA has that conflict. That is one of the reasons they're at the school. 
none of them have a perfect grasp on how to control their abilities. All of you need to know your maximum capabilities. It's the most rational way of figuring out your potential as a pro hero. We just happen to be with Deku the most as he struggles. Another big conflict that Deku faces is doing well in classes and school events in order to become a hero. But again, every other character that is a student at UA experiences that struggle. Every single student at UA wants to be the best. So Deku striving to surmount Bakugo or Todoroki is no different than Tetsu Tetsu wanting to be better than Kirishima. The last conflict that Deku experiences, and arguably the most dangerous, is fighting the villains. Still though, even in this scenario, Deku is not the focus and center of these conflicts, nor does he experience it alone. He just happens to be in close proximity to the events like many of the other side characters. Hopefully you're starting to realize what I'm saying here. Azuko Midoriya is definitely the person we spend the most time with, but as far as being singularly significant to the conflicts of the narrative and to focus of the events of the plot, Deku is no more impactful than any other side character. Sure, Deku has affected the story by inspiring other characters into action that move the plot forward. You made him use his father's power. Midoriya, don't tell me you were trying to save young Todoroki this whole time. But being a vehicle for other characters to significantly impact the plot is the definition of a side character. In place of Deku being the main character though, I give that spot to All Might. And here's why. All Might is at the center of the story and the conflict, and he experiences the greatest consequences thereof. If you really look at it, the story of My Hero Academia is about All Might, just told from Deku's perspective. Every single action taken by every single character is in relation to All Might. All of the students and heroes are looking to live up to the ideals and standards that All Might has set, or they want to surpass him. Every action that the villains of the show take are in service to bringing down All Might and the ideals of justice that he has established. The USJ attack was done to kill All Might. The Nomus were made to kill All Might. All for One appeared to kill All Might. Stain thought that the only actual hero in the world, the only person worth killing him, was All Might. No matter how you slice it, All Might is at the center of everything. He makes the decisions that move the plot forward like giving Deku a quirk in the first place, or writing a letter to Gran Torino that prompted him to train Deku. He resolves the conflicts of the plot, like defeating Nomu and All for One. And look, I'm not saying that the other characters don't matter or are poorly written. That isn't the case at all. What I am saying is that all the other characters, Deku included, largely play a complementary role to a narrative focused on All Might. But getting back to All Might's final fight, Recognizing him as the main character only half explains the weightiness behind his final battle with All for One. What still stands is that the main allure of that fight came from the culmination of All Might's narrative journey, even though we've only seen All Might at the end of his journey. Well, that is actually where Azuka Midoriya's real purpose comes in. Through Deku, we were allowed the opportunity to see All Might's full transformation from the quirkless boy to the all-time great hero including his struggles and conflicts and everything in between. And the show does this all through parallelism and synergy. Now, I know I'm getting a bit technical on you with the terms here, but they're actually pretty easy to understand. Let's start with synergy. Synergy is the interaction of two parts that combine to create something greater than the sum of their individual effects. If that sounds a bit complicated, to make things more simple, synergy is the ability to make two plus two equal five. To give a real world example, let's say company A has five workers and makes $200 an hour. And let's say company B also has five workers and makes 200 bucks an hour. Synergy would be if company A and B merged and ended up making $500 an hour. The end result of the combination is something greater than the individual parts. So with that down, let's move on to parallelism and how My Hero Academia honestly uses it in a way that I've never really seen before. Typically, Parallelism in literature and fiction is used in service to grammar and sentence structure. To make something parallel in writing, you simply have one part of a sentence be closely matched or mirrored by another part of a sentence. Parallelism is all about using two components so synonymously that they actually feel like one. For example, let's take the sentence, the patriarch exhibits this behavior and now his son does too. Doesn't quite roll off the tongue, right? But by using parallelism, I could transform this into the much shorter sentence, like father, like son. 
This new sentence shows parallelism because its first and second parts are constructed almost identically, but they still retain their individual meanings, while also working together to create a more complex finished product. And if this combination sounds familiar, it's because it's just synergy. Parallelism is 100% based off synergy, the combined effects of two components that become greater than the sum of their parts. And now that I've used the last 300 words to completely bore you, let's apply all this new information to My Hero Academia. The reason I say the show uses parallelism in a way I haven't seen before is because instead of using the technique exclusively for grammar and dialogue, the show uses parallelism for characters, specifically Deku and All Might. Think about it. At the beginning of the show, Deku is just starting his journey. He is a quirkless young man with an indomitable spirit that is eventually given one for all, gains entrance into UA, has a hot-headed rival, personal villain, and a wise mentor in Gran Torino. The show is chronicling the slow progression of his character into a real hero by showing his interactions with all these different pieces of his narrative journey. But all those pieces that we see Deku interact with run parallel to what All Might deals with as well. He was a quirkless young man with an indomitable spirit that was eventually given one for all. He gained entrance into UA, has a hot-headed rival, a personal villain, and a wise mentor in Gran Torino. Throughout the first 50 episodes, All Might and Deku share the same pieces that make up the same story. Heck, everything about Deku is parallel to All Might, from his costume to his fighting style. The only difference between the two characters, and it is a major one, is that All Might is a depiction of a character that has attained his goal of becoming a great hero, while Deku is a depiction of a character that is still in the midst of trying to achieve great heroism. These are two distinct individual characters and journeys, the novice and the master, but they run so parallel to each other that they produce something greater than the sum of their narrative parts. And for two and a half seasons, this is Deku's true character function. Deku's journey and narrative details are so synonymous, so parallel to All Might's, that he is able to fill in the absent pieces of All Might's character journey that we as the audience were not given. Through parallelism, the show is able to provide All Might's complete character journey by telling his and Deku's incomplete stories simultaneously. And that is the reason why the fight between All Might and All For One had so much emotional and narrative weight behind it. It was the culmination of All Might's character journey, and not just the powerful, mature All Might we have seen in the show, but of the struggling, fledgling All Might that Deku represents. And upon this completion at the end of the fight, that is when Deku becomes the main character, and it honestly is insanely perfect for the show. As the last embers of All Might's quirk go cold, he quite literally passes the torch to Deku. It's such a beautiful moment in the show because Deku not only becomes the new most important person in the world of the show, he becomes the new most important person in the narrative. Deku's entire character is based around becoming a hero that could stand at the center of all the world's conflict and still prevail with a smile. That journey would have been completely undercut if he were the main character from the beginning, because by definition, the main character is the one who stands at the center of conflict. By starting Deku off as a side character who participates in conflict but is never directly the focus of it, the show then allowed itself the perfect opportunity to punctuate him taking up All Might's mantle by also making him the main character. His role in the narrative perfectly aligned to change with his role in universe. And that's the reason I'm so excited for season 4. It's the first full season length opportunity for Deku to occupy this new narrative role. Shoot style isn't just Deku realizing that he can kick. Think for yourself. You're still trying to imitate me. It's him as a character for the first time, becoming non-parallel to All Might, progressing and meeting the conflict in a new way that is completely his own, irrespective of All Might, forging a unique identity for himself. Going forward, Deku isn't just going to be a substitute for young All Might. He's going to be his own character at the center of his own conflicts. Season 4 has the opportunity to be something really special for the show, because Deku isn't the sidekick anymore, he's the hero.